I think Japanese people don't want to ask questions. <laughs> okay, so yes, we've got a question from the gentleman whose wife is tracking him. <laughs> yes, please introduce yourself again. Yes, thank you, Captain, from the press. So, Mike, uh, what about the shipping industry? Well, ultimately, the case of cars, and the spoke, the camera has spoken about the uh, high drive on BMW. What about the ships? Do you think those vessels and ultimately those vessels? You know, German Harbour is the biggest harbour in Africa. What about the TNF? Okay, thank you. Uh, another question? Okay, there's a question on the phone. <coughs> if you could just raise your hand so that we know who to go to next. Oh, so we just have two questions. Okay, um, Vijay Palmer from the Uyuno e Mobility Technology Innovation Program. Um, just a question from Mungise. Uh, just firstly, commenting the city uh, on, on taking that uh, project with the uh, taxi association and the uh, transport system. Just a question um, with, with regards to the innovation being imposed within the taxi monitoring and, and feedback of the users. Uh, very commendable, but I think it's limited to the informal economy in terms of access to mobile phones. How are you addressing that challenge um, so that the main informal um, economy in a sense is using the public transport, but in this shortage of our access to technology. How are we looking like that? Thank you. Okay, so um, welcome, Hinton. Uh, yes, so Hinton, uh, he runs our e-mobility platform in Port Elizabeth. Okay, so we just had the two persons. So, oh, there's a third person. Hi, good day. My name is Tony. I'm from the Tourism Tourism Center. My question is very simple. I think uh, we often have these sessions you know, throughout the year. My main concern, I always say in many sessions, is that I want to be able to see a very simplified presentation where it's just all is there on the presentation is an action panel. Um, with the first one, there's a whole lot of technology, same bodies of technologies, and I think integration is one thing that I have. But key for me is when are we going to be saying, oh, by 2030, this is implemented. By 2080, this is implemented. So that we don't have back 10 years, we're still thinking about technology. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question, uh, a fourth question. So I just uh, picked a quick one for the gentleman from uh, IT Systems. Uh, my name is Pedro, and I'm from Tom Chile. Um, we're, a, we're a land developer. And I, I wondered um, what your view would be on time frames around the autonomous vehicles. Um, we obviously can't plan over, over extensive time horizons. And so the question would be, to what extent should we be structuring this into traffic planning now um, for the future? Thanks. Okay, and, um, and I will ask the, oh sorry, the yeah. other for the question. Very interesting. Coach. Now, I'm just interested in finding out. So I don't think uh, we are doing the man area vessels yet. Are we drawn? No. No. Well, so I, I just want to know what is it that those who are involved in unmanned area vehicles what is it that they're going to do about bird migration? Like birds. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, good. So, uh, so there's been a, a series of five questions, and I will uh, take the liberty as a uh, moderator to ask some as well. So, my question from the to so all the gentlemen is that we've talked a lot about technology, but I just want to know the extent to which these technologies are actually indigenous. In other words, how are we actually promoting technologies developed by South Africa. Okay, so uh, this is where we'll respond. I'll give, we will respond as seated. So we'll start with you, Michael, to respond to any of the six questions that have been posed. Sure, uh, you will be hearing. Um, first to uh, my friend, which is why I'm going to respond. Shipping and harvest. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, it's pointless talking about uh, using technology to transform our societies if we don't look at a, um, a really a holistic view of, of what we term really smart cities. Um, I referenced in my presentation um, the smart people for project at Durban Harbour. Um, and that really for us is the first phase in terms of how we help organizations like Transnet. Um, Take ownership of that digital grid um, and utilize technology to not 
often we deliver a fair value for data and organization. And when we talk about better value, it's about uh, increasing their op and optimizing their efficiency and also generating more money um, for themselves. Uh, and and um, I think that the chance to change that job of, of, um, of trying to put innovation into a very rigid, structured, um, state of entity in the right way and um, and it's, it's absolutely working. Um, we can see it and we, we've managed to move it, and I know this is going to sound scary, but we've moved it from reactive maintenance to planned maintenance and in the next three months we actually start predictive maintenance, uh, which is which is really amazing. Um, it, it's a mind shift for them as an organization and a culture shift for them which is very difficult to manage in an organization that way. Um, so, so technology can take you so far, but then it comes down to assure it and with the new generation uh, to get it done. Um, the second um, point that I was asked to comment on was about integration. Um, absolutely. Uh, it's points that we're being silos. We have, we have a lot of data from all over the place. How we pull that information together ultimately allows us as the members of the society to make choices and make decisions. And, and decide where and where we spend our time and our money. Um, and then lastly, um, the lady from Congo who did um, quite interesting when a when when sugar-based business said, well, can't be your elephant. That's interesting. <laughs> See how we spend right? So, so let's sweeten up the answer for you. Um, autonomous drive. Um, I think, let me, let me address in two ways from a property development perspective, because we do know there's some side to answer. Um, I think you as a business uh, should look to partner with, uh, on with other ecosystem partners that maybe are coming from the technology field. You need to look at how are you as a developer of properties going to adequately address uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure um, within your base, and you need to be addressing that in any of your stock that's going to come to market in the next three years. Which means you're probably too late for probably no to address them for quite a long time. The second thing that you should address uh, in terms of why you could address for you was the autonomous drive question. Um, I think that um, we are we are already at level four in terms of autonomy. If you remember the one slide that one of the folks put up, um, we are already um, hitting on level four, um, and, and that is planned for 2020. Um, so, so you can expect fully autonomous vehicles to be available for you by 2022, 2023, the end of the market. Yeah. Okay. And then the last part that I've got is that drones and birds. I think some of you comment on that. Um, most drones operate uh, below um, 400 feet. Uh, that's the cap that we have at the moment. I think for, for, for us as a society, we should be more concerned about um, no drone zones. How do we limit drones from entering areas we don't want them to enter? Uh, we, we spend a lot of energy working on those kinds of solutions, like uh, key points like we can't go to the other hand. Drones flying over the edge is just impossible. But absolutely, a uh, drone technology here to stay. Um, as, I, as I referenced very briefly in the presentation, um, we're using drones to, to solve a very simple business problem in, in the port in Durban. If, believe it or not, to get the paperwork out for the boat, you have to print the paperwork, get onto a boat, find the guy who piloted the boat, and take the boat out to the other boat and have the paperwork over. Now we're using drones. We print this out, put it in an envelope, and send it on. Uh, it's saving hundreds and hundreds of man hours is how they do that. And so there is technology in this case to go beyond the delivery pizza and ask me what could go wrong. Thank you. Uh, the question from BJ regarding the use of technology, particularly in sports uh, and uh, in this project that we are venturing into. I think given the Public transport commuter profile as well as the building standard make. And we have to be very conscious about that. Although we take sure quite an extensive growth in ownership of phones, but we have to ensure that we keep it to a basic minimum level of technology. For example, uh, the, the commuters, uh, any phone can use the access to. For example, to interact to raise the same person. So we have to keep it to a basic minimum and uh, be conscious of that. But from the vehicle tracking point of view, that's why we're saying that we want to venture into partnership and also utilize what is there in the market uh, and ensure that the, the best practice, industry best practice, which happens to that other than us, 
our core business is not uh, technology, but we want to embrace technology to come up with simple solutions. So please, that's the uh, best part of the business. Thank you. I've got a quite last bit, thank you. Um, as one comment to the, the lady from Shanghai Phillips is, um, you know, BMW uh, said that the first autonomous driving car will be available uh, by 2025 um, to demand. Um, but it looks like it's going to be moved forward to about, uh, it's about, say, 2022, 2023. So that's, it's, a, it's a fast reality. Um, and more so a today's reality. If we haven't already started planning the electric charging points and electric charging bays, then we're falling behind the bus in a big way. Uh, a lot of the, the business parks and a lot of the, the new buildings going up in Santon, for example, are setting a trend that there are a number of parking bays that are charged uh, for electric um, vehicles. So they've got charging stations in those parking bays. Um, so that's where we need to start looking at the city uh, when it comes to property development time planning. And uh, overall, um, mobility. And what was the question? Around uh, technology, indigenous technologies, because it's just bigger than five South Africans. Okay, um, you know, is in, in the motor vehicle segment, not, not so much um, from, from an OEM perspective, and that's purely because most of the OEMs are internationally based. But we do have incredible technologies that are coming into that, especially in the aerospace. Um, and we, I'm sure quite a few of you would watch Carte Blanche a few weeks ago, where the guys, the South 